Hello everybody, welcome back to another scripting tutorial on my channel and in today's video we're going to be learning how to make a shift to sprint system in Roblox Studio. Without any more stalling, let's get started. Alright, so the first thing we're going to need to do is obviously set up our script. So come up here under starter player and inside here you will find starter player scripts. Click the plus icon and insert a local script. We are then going to rename this local script to, uh, let's say sprint manager and then we need to define a few variables about the player okay so first we need to get the player instance that we want to make changes to so let's first do local player equals game colon get service players and then we're going to just get the local player after that we need to get the player's character so we can in turn get their humanoid to change their run speed okay so let's do local character equals player dot character or player dot character added and then we're just going to throw a wait just so it waits for the player's character to load into the game thus it won't throw an error if it doesn't find a character instance right away now we need to get the characters humanoid so we can make their changes so let's do local humanoid equals character colon wait for child and now we're just waiting for the humanoid to load into the game All right so next I would like to define the user input service so we can check when a player inputs a key in our case uh, it's going to be the left shift so let's do local user input service equals game colon get service and we'll do user input service also we need to define a couple of variables that are going to help us check whether or not the player is actually sprinting or not so let's do local is running is equal to false we're going to use this as a debounce and a check to see if the player is uh, currently running the next thing we need to do is to define the key that we want to be pressed to initiate the sprint. So let's do local start, actually no, let's do trigger key equals, all right, so bear with me here, enum dot key code dot, and then we've got all these uh, keys that we can use to get the input, but in our case, for this video, we're doing left shift. Next we need to drop our line and define a couple more variables which will contain our sprinting and regular speed values which are just ints. So let's do local regular underscore speed. I like to put int values in all caps so they're easier to pick out. All right. Uh, we're just going to make that to uh, obviously 16 which is the default speed and we're going to set the run speed so run underscore speed equals uh, 30 in this case we're using uh, 30 okay so now we need to check if the user input service is uh, fired and there is an input detected and we can act upon that and change the players humanoid all right so let's first use our variable user input service and we're going to use the uh, built-in function of input begin we're going to connect a function to that with a parameter of input all right so we're going to use this input parameter to check what sort of input we have received from the user input service okay so we're going to add a conditional statement so we're going to go if input so we're just double checking that the input actually exists and input right dot key code equals equals we're checking for equality not one equals we need double equals and we need to do trigger key okay I've named this trigger key as a variable so you can change this all right as you wish so it can be whatever key you want but for now we're just using the left shift all right so now that we've checked that the trigger key is in fact pressed so we can make the desired changes to the player's character all right so we're going to do humanoid dot walk speed okay so this is our sprinting walk speed can they initiate the sprint we're going to do equals run underscore speed all right also we're going to do is running is now equal to 
true, okay? Now we need to detect if the player has stopped holding down the trigger and stopped the sprint in that case, okay? Okay, so now basically all I need you to do is to copy and paste this line here, okay? All this, copy and paste this down the bottom. And we're going to make a few changes to this, okay? So up here where it says input began, I'll, go, I'll just zoom in there for you, there you go. Where it says input began, uh, delete began and put ended, it should autofill that for you. Make sure it's input.ended, okay? Kernel connect function, input, input.keycode equals the trigger key. So we're double checking that if the key that has been, uh, the key that has stopped being pressed is the same uh, trigger key, okay? Because we don't want them to press Q and for the sprint to stop if they're still holding shift, okay? So then we just need to change the walk speed to uh, what is it defined as? Uh, regular. Regular speed, and we will see it is running to false. Okay, there we go. That should be our script completely finished. So now all we should have to do is click play. We join in here, and I hold down shift. As you can see, what's happening? My player's uh, humanoid run stats are being set to the run speed, and then when I let go, it's being set back to the regular speed. Let me quickly just show you up here inside the Explorer, inside my character where it says Humanoid. I'm going to go to Properties and I'm going to show you right here down where it says Walk Speed. Watch this corner where it says Walk Speed. As I press Shift, it's jumped up to 30 and when I press Unshift, it's gone back to 16. Anyways guys, that's all I've got time for for today. If you enjoyed the video, please consider leaving a like and maybe even subscribing if you enjoy my videos. But uh, yeah, other than that, thank you so very much for watching. See you next time.